An unlucky person remains unlucky to the bitter end, and Tagami Yusuke was undoubtedly one of those people. He was 32 and single. That would be enough as it was, but on top of that, he was constantly in a state of poverty. He was but a lowly salesman who travelled the country knocking on the doors of the wealthy, who would then chase him away like a stray dog. He tried to make himself feel better by reminding himself that at least he got paid, but still, his luck didn't change. Today as well, he was out from the morning knocking on the doors of six companies and 51 wealthy-looking houses, and all 57 turned him away, so he sighed as he sat alone in his car. <sighs> it's just not my day. Tagami threw his pile of unsigned contracts onto the passenger's side seat and glared up at the window of the company that had just turned him away. Perhaps it was home time, because a single woman was putting the blinds down. <sighs> Tagami sighed again. Oh well, let's just try again tomorrow. He started the car, and then shook his head, as if trying to fling off his bad luck. Then, he forced a smile on his face, slowly shifted gears, and started driving as the city darkened. Two hours later, Tagami ate dinner in the corner of a small restaurant on the outskirts of town that looked like it was about to go out of business. An incredibly unfunny quiz show played on the TV attached to the wall. He was the only customer there. He'd almost finished his deep-fried oysters meal. He aimlessly ate the small amount of food remaining as he stared blankly at the TV. The host was announcing everyone's points. Once that was done, the quiz for viewers at home began. Finally, as the show entered some commercials, he stood up. Ma'am, the bill please. Ma'am, the bill please. As he moved towards the register, he was still thinking about how unlucky he was. The oysters he just ate seemed much smaller than the samples on display. That will be 800 yen. 800 yen. Um, eh? Tagami was so shocked that he almost dropped his wallet. He only had three 1,000 yen bills inside. He'd been so busy with work, he forgot to visit the bank to withdraw some more. <sighs> he unhappily handed over one of the notes and took the change. Listless, he put the change back in his wallet. Only 2,000 yen left, huh? <sighs> Unlucky to the bitter end. And it's not like any banks are open at this time either. Still sighing, Tagami's shoulders slumped as he headed back to his car. He would no doubt be unable to find any lodgings with just 2,000 yen, no matter how cheap they were. Oh well, guess I'll just spend the night in my car. Tagami drove around aimlessly. He had decided to sleep in his car, but he couldn't decide on where to park it. He wanted somewhere with little traffic, an easy place to park his car, but the more he looked, the further his car headed out into the wilderness. Next thing he knew, he found himself on a thin, dangerous mountain pass with no one on it. Dense trees on either side of the road with no lights spread out over the car. 
There might not be much traffic out here, but still. And so he continued driving. But he had no idea when this twisting mountain pass might end, nor did it show any signs that it would start descending again. He started to think that maybe he should just keep driving all night until morning broke. Driving until morning could be an interesting experience, after all. But then... Tagami noticed a figure in his headlights. He looked closer, not quite believing his eyes, and it appeared to be a businessman in a suit. He ran down the middle of the road with an attaché case in his right hand. How foolish. The thought briefly flitted through his head, but he was so tired from work that he couldn't think straight. He was fed up with all his bad luck, and that man simply became a target of his rage instead. Seriously, is there anyone out there not trying to get in my way? What the hell are you doing? Idiot! He frowned and honked his car horn, then opened his window to scream at the man. Then the man, swinging his arms with good form, tilted his head slightly and moved to the shoulder of the road. Seemed he was moving aside to let the car pass. Heh, <laughs> as long as you understand, yeah. He smiled scornfully, and then Tagami pressed down on the accelerator again. The car got closer and closer, and then finally drove alongside the man. Tagami turned to look at him as he was about to pass by. He was so frightened that his entire body froze. The man was smiling. Not only that, but his face was pure white, like paper or wax. At that moment, he finally realised that what was going on wasn't normal. His heart started to beat like crazy, and he desperately took a deep breath. He slammed down on the accelerator to escape. The man in the rearview mirror slowly got further and further away. Finally, as he turned a corner, the man disappeared entirely into the darkness. Phew! What the hell was that? Tagami tried to calm the furious beating of his heart with his left hand on his chest. He tried to picture the man's face again. He tried to picture the man's face again. It was pure white and flat, like a no mask. And both his long, thin eyes stared at him. And yeah, he was definitely smiling. Tagami then casually glanced at his mirror once again. His mouth fell open in shock. The man who had disappeared into the darkness had, at some point, caught up to his car and was running only 50 metres behind him. Swinging his arms with good form, the man rapidly approached the car. (laughs) Hey! The man quickly caught up to him, running not even a metre behind his car. When he looked in the rearview mirror, that face he had just remembered floated there. The man didn't even huff or puff as he kept speed with the car going 50 kilometers per hour. Shit, this is not good. Maybe he's angry I honked at him. God damn it, he was smiling deliberately at me. Tagami held his left hand up towards his rearview mirror and then bowed his head several times in apology. 
but the man continued to grin at him as he followed the car at ferocious speed. All right, times like this call for. Having made up his mind, Tagami nodded, took his wallet out of his pocket and removed the remaining two 1,000 yen notes. He wound his window down and put his right hand outside holding the money. Then he let go. The two notes floated behind him like a kite cut off from its string. But the man didn't even look at the money and kept running after the car. His eyes were cold and inorganic as he continued grinning. Tagami looked at the man, almost in tears. God damn it! If money won't do, then what should I do? But the man's white face and creepy smile continued following him in the rearview mirror. Does he mean to kill me? He said the words out loud, so Tagami trembled. The man's head in the mirror shook. D did he hear me? He looked in the rearview mirror again to check, and, still smiling, the man lifted his case in his right hand up to face height. It unlocked, and the lid fell open. A large white strip of cloth unfurled like a picture book in the darkness with the words, I'm it, on it. The man continued grinning as he ran straight for the car. Tagami was dumbfounded. Th this goddamn freak! He quickly looked around his car and found the strawberry milkshake paper cup he'd left there three days earlier in the drink holder. With sweaty hands, he pressed the switch and the window wound down. The powerfully cold air from outside flooded the car in the same instant. The man in the suit noticed the open window and furiously swinging his arms and pumping his legs, ran for the driver's side. Eat this! Tagami screamed and threw the paper cup at the man's head. Splat. The cup hit him right in the face, and faint peach-coloured liquid from the strawberry shake splattered all over him. The man stopped moving immediately. Now's my chance! Tagami slammed down on the accelerator. Gotta get away, now! As the car picked up speed, the man slowly faded in the distance. Finally, he was swallowed by the darkness entirely. Phew! As he closed the open window, Tagami let out a sigh of relief. But still, why does this keep happening to me? Hmm? As he looked in the rearview mirror, the blood visibly drained from his face. Oh, come on! Give me a break! In the darkness, a figure gradually came into view in the mirror. And what he saw in the light from his tail lamp was, of course, that man in the suit. His case with the words, I'm it, dangling from his right hand was still there as he sped after the car. Next thing he knew, the man was back in the same position as before, only a few metres behind his car. His face was covered in milkshake as he ran 50 kilometres per hour down the dark night road. And his expression was still creepily happy. Help me! Tagami finally screamed, no longer caring how he looked.
then. His vision suddenly went white, and he heard a loud horn. A large truck appeared in the bright white lights, hurtling towards him. The truck trusted that he would give way and showed no signs of slowing down. Tagami panicked and turned left. Tagami panicked and turned left. Then he slammed on the brakes as hard as he could. The truck approached his right with furious speed. To his left, never-ending darkness that spread out to the valley floor. It was a matter of life or death. But just as he was about to hurtle over the edge of the cliff, his car hit the guardrail. The truck roared past his side. Phew. What the hell is up with that guy's driving? Jeez. Tagami breathed a sigh of relief. Then, startled, he looked behind him. But that man in the suit was nowhere to be seen. Eh? Is he gone? The man had disappeared like smoke. Slowly picking up speed as he climbed the mountain, Tagami thought over everything that had just happened. For a while, he nervously looked in the rearview mirror, but finally, he started to feel more like himself again. Thinking about it now, it was hard to believe. Was I dreaming? Tagami muttered absent-mindedly. Yeah, it was a dream. I dozed off while driving and the truck woke me up. That sort of thing happens all the time, right? Various ideas came to mind one after the other as he tried to convince himself. If that wasn't the answer, then what was? It was... a dream. Tagami muttered to himself once more. Without even realising it, he had stopped climbing and reached the top of the mountain. There was a magnificent shrine, besides which were several vending machines. There was a bench next to those that made up a small rest area. Maybe I should take a break. Tagami slowly pulled over to the left. Just in case, he checked the area first and then jumped out of the car. He made his way over to the vending machines, picked a coffee, and looked for some change in his pockets. Thank God I didn't throw this too. Eh? He suddenly came back to his senses. He pulled out his wallet and checked the inside. There wasn't a single bill left. It wasn't a dream. At that moment, he heard something rustling behind the vending machines. Tagami was so surprised he nearly fell over. No way! It, it couldn't be! He slowly backed up towards the car, his bloodshot eyes focused on the vending machines in front of him. A figure stepped out of the shadows, but it wasn't that man in the suit. It was a small old lady in a yukata, and she walked over to him with a big smile on her face. <laughs> what the hell's up with this old hag? The old woman didn't seem to care about the frightened look on his face, and continued walking towards him. Keeping pace with her, Tagami continued to back towards the car. Drink! If you won't drink from the machines, then you can drink from me! 
The old woman then suddenly tore open her yukata and burst out laughing when she saw Tagami's face. He? Tagami couldn't believe what he'd seen. What are you saying? But the old woman continued walking towards him. Drink up. No need to hold back. Come on. She held up both breasts and thrust them towards him. B- bye. The very next moment, he ran as fast as his legs would carry him to the car and flung the door open. Damn it! He screamed, tears filling his eyes, and again he slammed on the accelerator and took off. Why? Why does this keep happening? He was on the verge of tears. Why did I have to run into two different monsters in one single night? At that moment, he felt eyes looking upon him from the right, so he turned to look in that direction. Ah. The old woman ran at furious speed right outside his car window. She held her exposed chest with both hands as the hem of her yukata blew in the breeze as she ran alongside the car. Drink up! That was what her lips appeared to be saying. Leave me alone, you old hag! Tagami banged on the window as he screamed. As though surprised by this sudden show of force, the old woman turned and then dropped to her haunches in the middle of the road. Then, just like that, she rolled away down the road. But considering everything that had already happened, he couldn't allow himself to lose focus. Tagami kept watch in the rearview mirror with bloodshot eyes. Then... In the darkness reflected in the mirror, a small figure gradually took shape. That figure slowly got bigger, and it soon became clear that it was that old lady rapidly approaching his car, her yukata blowing in the breeze. This again? The old woman was on the car in an instant, and again she sped down the road next to the driver's side window. As her tattered yukata blew in the wind, she powered her short legs like pistons. She ran with terrifying speed. In a daze, Tagami turned right. In a daze, Tagami turned right. The car's tyres screeched, and the car slid harshly to the right. Then the old lady went flying, or so he thought. But when he straightened the car up, the old woman was still running by his window like nothing had changed. Not only that, but she was smiling. She grinned as she peered into the car. Damn it! Tagami turned the steering wheel right again. At that moment, a terrifying scream ripped through the air. Tagami closed his eyes before he could stop himself. Then he heard a bang above his head. It appeared something had landed on the car. And then... Tagami thought his heart was going to stop. That old woman's face suddenly appeared right in front of him on his windscreen. Lying on her stomach on his roof, the old woman looked down at him, her face upside down. 
literally right in front of him. The old woman's wrinkled face grinned at him. Her dishevelled hair splayed outwards, and her head looked several times bigger than it really was. Tagami suddenly slammed on the brakes. She flew off with a heavy thump, and his seatbelt cut into his lower abdomen. Then the old woman in the yukata cut through the air, inertia taking hold, as she still smiled at him. He quickly put the car into reverse, and then took off at full speed. The car sped off backwards. He put his left hand on the back of the passenger's seat, and looking behind him, Tagami reversed out of there as fast as he could. He wanted to turn the car around. Reversing down a dark mountain road with only his tail lights for light was beyond reckless. But if he wanted to turn around, then he needed to find a curve wide enough to do so. As he reversed, Tagami briefly glanced out of the front of the car. A cold sweat drenched him in an instant. The old lady was slowly getting up. Hey, come on, stay down already. She slowly stood up, and then, as though remembering something, narrowed her eyes and looked up. Then she slowly reached both arms up towards the sky. Then, she suddenly removed her arms from the top of her yukata, fully bearing herself. The old lady's small yet oddly muscled back seemed to have some black letters written on it in the light. Even though he didn't want to look, Tagami couldn't help himself. I'm it. What the hell does that mean? At any rate, the old woman with I'm it, inked into her back, stood firm in the middle of the road with her feet set. Crap. Come on! Tagami once again focused all his concentration on reversing the car. As he reversed, he glanced forward for just a second. That old woman's back was even closer than before. Somehow, the old woman was running towards him at full speed, in reverse, with I'm it on her back still facing him. There's no way! At a loss for words, Tagami tried to reverse even faster. But the moment he turned around, he suddenly couldn't move, nor even breathe. He stopped the car. In the darkness of the dim taillights, he saw a familiar shape. That man in the suit had appeared behind him, a smile on his face. The tiny old lady, her upper half bare and running in reverse at him from in front of the car and the man in the suit with the creepy smile behind him. Tagami had no way of escape. God, please. Giving up, he stepped on the brakes, held his head, and closed his eyes. There was a loud bang, and the old woman's back landed on the bonnet. The man in the suit approached the driver's side with jerky, awkward movements. Then... Birds chirped in the calm mountain air. The sky had changed at some point, from black to blue, and that blue was gradually getting brighter. 
a morning mist gently covered the mountains, and the cries of the birds gradually grew louder, echoing all around. Kiki-kiki-kiki-kiki! A nightingale cried loudly. Morning had reached the mountains. Tagami Yusuke, the salesman travelling from town to town like a travelling bird, nervously sat up in the eerie silence around him. He slowly opened his eyes and timidly looked around. But he couldn't see those monsters outside his car anywhere. Eh? For a moment, nothing made sense. He panicked and tried to sort it all out in his head. They're not here, which means that when morning comes, then perhaps... He picked up the vinyl umbrella he left on his back seat, crouched down, and then finally got out of the car. He held the umbrella at the ready, like a weapon, then did a lap of the car looking for those two monsters. They really were gone. Tagami collapsed to his knees on the road. Tagami collapsed to his knees on the road. I'm saved. I'm saved. Someone was tapping his shoulder. But after driving all night, running from his fear, Tagami showed no signs of waking up. Somebody started slapping his cheek. Hmm? Huh? At that, Tagami finally, slowly, opened his eyes. Seriously, how long do you plan on sleeping here for? In the bright morning light, a man spoke to him. Tagami rubbed his eyes and, still sleepy, looked up at the owner of the voice. Then... Ah. Having said that single word, his mouth froze in the same shape. In front of him stood a familiar visage. He had a pale face, wore a tight-fitting suit, and in his right hand held a case. Ah, 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 ah. Tagami scooted back across the ground. And what exactly does awa mean? The man was saying something. But Tagami was so scared that he didn't hear it. Help! Help me! Behind the man in the suit, a tiny old woman appeared. It was her. He, he! Tagami flailed his arms and legs and tried to flee. No, no way! Well, that will be a bit of a problem, you trying to run away. After all, it's my turn to run away next. The man in the suit said in a relaxed tone as he looked down at Tagami. That's right, you must play by the rules. The old woman stroked her chin triumphantly. Eh? Tagami looked back at them, surprised by this unexpected turn of events. What on earth are you? Have you never heard of tag before? Oh my. The old woman in the yukata said, her voice fed up. Tag? 
What on earth are they on about? And this is why I told you that I didn't want to involve strangers in our game. The man in the suit said to the old lady in the yukata. That has nothing to do with me, you hear? Nothing. All I know is that I'm no longer it. I'm not it either. Hmm. The old lady crossed her arms. A brief silence filled the air. Shall we go back then? Hmm. Yes, let's. As he listened to the pair talk, Tagami slowly came to understand what was going on. I see. So that was it. Tag. They were playing tag. And that was why they were chasing me around the place. <laughs> Those assholes. Tagami suddenly jumped to his feet. He looked around the area with bloodshot eyes. He could see the man in the suit and the tiny old woman walking side by side through the sunny morning mist at the end of the road. Tag? I'm it because they touched me. Well, isn't this just a fun little game then? Tagami glared at the pair's backs with threatening eyes. Yeah, that sure sounds fun, huh? There was a sound by Tagami's temple, like something snapped. God damn it! Just you wait, assholes! Tagami suddenly screamed in a terrifyingly loud voice. His anger had already blown past critical mass. Wait right there, damn it! Screaming, he ran after the pair as fast as his legs would carry him. Oh, here he comes, the old lady said joyfully. Seems that way, yes, the man in the suit said, relaxed, as usual. Well, shall we start running? Wait! Damn it! I said wait! Tagami's screams echoed on and on throughout the lone mountain road as it gradually grew brighter. <laughs>